we are back with another beginner tutorial. This is a this is a, this is a fun one. This is our yearly snowman, and it seems every year we kind of increase the uh, the uh, skill or the look. I guess not the skill, but it's still beginner. But uh, I like this one a lot, and it's going to be a fun little project. And we're going to add a, or maybe add a tool or two if you feel so inclined. You don't have to. You can do the whole thing with just the knife. So. I'm using a, uh, a piece of basswood today. It's two by two by six, but I don't care if you do one and a half by six. I don't care if you do three quarter by inch and a half. I don't care if you do one inch by three inch. Doesn't matter. The concepts are all the same. It's just the starting point. Like last night, this was my starting point that uh, I started with as a practice and uh, learn a lot show myself a lot and uh, our project today is this fella but that said I'm giving you lots of ideas in the meantime of ways to change it from sticks to wire to valentines to hockey to you name it like there's so many options and uh, if it was uh, if it was Christmas it could be a gift you can have him holding stuff you can do anything you want so like I said, very interchangeable project, and I want you to make it your own. I want you to use your imagination, and, uh, you know, if there's some little facet of your life that uh, is meaningful, incorporate it. But uh, I'm just here to get you going, and uh, on that note, let's get going. So right off the bat, I've got six inches. I'm going to mark uh, halfway, and that's our halfway mark, and that's what it's going to be. So... If you got a little square or something, you can mark half all the way around. Or if you got good fingers, you can long fingers, you can scribe it all the way around. But I'm just going to give this rough, rough line around here. All right, and there you go. I'm going to use a, I guess it's an inch and seven eighths OCC tools knife. And uh, here we go. We're just going to uh, come in. If you're a beginner, make sure you got your safety equipment on. I know it's hypocritical of me to say, but it's your fingers, right? So I'm just taking little V cuts around all the corners. All right. And basically what we're doing is this halfway mark is the neck. All right. So now we're going to go deeper and deeper. And like I said, we're going to come across. We're going to join these two. All right, just like so. And the same thing around here. We can take little bites from each side. Come in and then do the middle. There's many ways to skin a cat. Like I said, we're going to introduce some more tools. So if you want to take a, uh, a V tool, you can take a V tool, run a V tool across. All right. That's not going to get you all the way, but it's going to give you a good start, right? But anyway, that is what we're going to do, and we're going to keep on doing it until we've got a real nice, deep separation. That's my word. That's my word. All right. I want all the sides to look like that. All right, that's where we're at. It's probably about a half inch deep on a two inch piece, but anyway, it's just a good a good separation. Now, my head, and my hat. I don't want it to be the same width as the body, and we're going to round everything. But let's say right across the top here too. I want to. Uh, I want to lose about a quarter inch in the sides. I'll do this side here, just by taking the corner off all the way up. You know, and then we'll just uh, come down. If you got a saw, you can cut it off. All right? But we're just showing you. Uh, I'm just going to say all the options all the time. <laughs> like I 
said, we'll make this as easy as you can. A two inch piece, there is a big difference from holding that uh, smaller inch and a half piece in your hand to holding a big two inch piece. But it, uh, it's a little bit harder to hold, or you can feel it more anyway. So then there we've taken off a quarter inch off that side. Now we want to bring our neck back again, right? So moving right along, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, but this is how this is going to go. I'm going to do one side and then I'm going to do the other side, but just removing a quarter inch to thin the, the head from the body shape. Alright, now we got both sides done. Like I said, we could have cut it and it's not much, it's only a quarter inch on each side, but now we have shoulders a little bit, right? And the snowman doesn't really have shoulders. And I should say too, common practice when you do a little man is you want that uh, shoulder, you want, you'd have it uh, up on an angle, but it's a snowman so that it's piled up. So it's not going to have the, uh, the same angle. All right. So now we want to uh, mark our head. I think, uh, let me find the, I'll just measure on my stick here. But, yeah, probably about an inch and a quarter up or so. We're going to do that. And then, again, like I said, with the shoulder that we don't have the angle, the hat, we want to have an angle. And we want that hat as part of the head. We always, the mistake is to have it looking like it's sitting on top of it, but it's actually part of the head. So I'm going to go, I'll give it another quarter inch on the back quarter inch lower so now we have that angle right and this is all rough we're just in the rough in stages right but see that we're gonna have a little angle so now I'm gonna do the same thing only this time I'm gonna keep one side flat under the hat I want flat even though we're gonna round the whole thing we're going to uh, Keep that flat not a not a v not a v up to the hat this is the under the brim of the hat all right we got lots to do this is just the basic roughing in area where it's going to be all right and come across Anyway, you get the idea. We come up underneath the brim of the hat, which will be rounded and changed. But long knife is nice on a bigger piece of wood. All right, so there you go. I'm just gonna rough in the rest of the hat, and then uh, we know where it is. See how we got the uh, hat roughed in. Nothing is rounded, nothing has changed, but now we can go around. We can start taking off some corners. Do a little bit of vertical rounding. All right. See what I'm going to do here is on the corner, if I come down on a corner, Right now, I've made two more corners. Now I take those corners off, and take those corners off, and keep taking corners off, and pretty soon you're round. Right? So if I go a little bit heavier, around, take the corner off, take the corner off. If you get that little, uh, see how the grain is pulled? You go, you go the other way. Anywhere you hit that, just do it the opposite way. Right? Soon enough, you're gonna have a round, uh, round ball head. So I'm gonna go up to the, up to the hat. We kind of went down the first time. But before we get carried away, we got a whole body to do this with. So let's shift back lower and do the body. All right. Okay, same thing. 
we're going to come down. Just peel her off. So on this one here, let's turn it around this way. Not much of a swale, but since we've got a bigger piece of wood and we've narrowed the head, we're going to have a little bit of a little bit of a swell here, but not too much. Okay, so it's still just a nice little shape. That's what we're going for. All right. So we're going to come down. Same thing. So we made two corners. We're going to come and take those corners off. All right. And if you do, if you peel the the wood a little bit. Okay, because you're going to cut this many times. Alright. It's coming around. Now we've got a big angle here, so we're going to do that swell in. You should know, too, that let's just do this for happiness sake. This is always going to be the front because of the angle of the hat. Alright. And then we start rounding in the shoulders. We come down. Corner this way, corner this way. Alright, take another corner. Another corner, make two corners. Take those corners off. I just had a thought before we get this totally rounded, let's find the center of our uh, arms, which is obviously an inch, right? But and let's come down. Oh, what do we got here? Let's say I grab the tape measure too. I'm going to say an inch, all right? We're going to do it the same on both sides. All right. So an inch down, all right? Make sure. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my drill here and I'm going to drill a hole. That hole is going to be too small for anything that I'm going to do for the arms in the future. But that has marked where it is. So now, as I'm rounding my way around, I don't have to even think about that again. But where the uh, center is, I'm never going to lose where I want the arms. All right. But so we're just doing the vertical rounding right now. Same thing in the back. I, I think I stabbed myself. Corner. Okay, I'm gonna go around and do the back, rounding it just like the front here, and uh, we'll start again. All right. Let's have a look at this. So you can see here. Got uh, our corners pretty much rounded. There's still a little flat spot in the middle here. We've brought our corners almost to center, but not quite. And that's okay for now. But I like the idea of uh, visually rounding the corners vertically before we do the, or yeah, vertically before we do the other way. All right. So the top here, we could go a little bit. Closer to center too, same, same as the bottom. Like, try to get that rounding just about to the center of the previous corner. Right? Just work it in the way around the corner. All right, let's stop for now. And uh, now the bottom, the body. This is too sharp of a corner, so we're just going to come around, maybe from the almost that inch down again. Now we're going to bring it around into that. Right tight into that line again. All right. So here's a thought. See how this one, and I'm going to do it on this one too. I took a cut a piece of t shirt 
made a scarf, right? So we're adding different uh, different things to it. Like it's not all going to be wood. I have the broom here too, and I'll show you how I made that later. But so I cut this out of a piece of uh, cloth. But if you wanted to carve one in, this would be the time when you draw it in and uh, carve that in. But I'm not going to do that. But I did that. Well, let's see. Same idea as the coat on the last year's. Uh, we just cut that in before, but we're not doing that, so we're not going to worry about it. But it is an option if you want to carve in your scarf instead of uh, instead of adding to it. But I like the idea of mixed media now a little bit more. Now, all the while that we're doing this, coming back into that, we're also we're creating another line that we're going to smooth out after. I'm not worried about being super neat and cleaning up all my cuts. We're still roughing it in, but we're uh, we're getting close to to not roughing it in. But we got to get that hat roughed in first before we can uh, say that. All right. So now you can see we've kind of created this little edge here, and now we're going to go underneath. And this is where there we're a little bit of a flat spot in the center. We're going to kind of just smooth that all in there. The more knife facets, facets in my mind, the better. But I'm going to texture this one after. Can you see a little bit of that texture in there? I'm going to purposely do that with uh, something else after the fact. But if you don't have a gouge, then you want as many facets as you can get. Right. Uh, we're gonna this is gonna be a little bit deeper before we're done. But but there's that uh, there's that hole. See how see how that can be a handy reminder after after rounding all this. It'll just be kind of guesswork of the actual center. Right. Now, I'm going to do the exact same thing on the bottom, and uh, maybe a little bit longer. Right. In fact, why don't we just draw a little, a little line around here. Yeah. I should have sanded the bottom. Makes it easier to write your name on. But Anyway, so that's where I'm going to aim for. So I'm just going to show you this corner here and then I'm going to do the rest. So there again we've created that little edge. I'm just going to Work around, and then by the time we're done, we should not have any of that flat spot that we left. It'll all be just knife facets. All right. All right. Nice, heavy, heavier bottom. I like it. See that. I'm going to do this all the way around the bottom. All right. All right. See. Facets are your friends. I've got that. I don't think I've got any of those little flat spots left at all. So I put a facet on every, every little piece of the bottom of this fellow. All right, and uh, yeah, it looks good. The paint will uh, take different to the uh, outside edge of the wood. That's why you want to make sure it's all cut. All right. Now we got this hat, and we 
we're going to come back towards the hat but not remember we don't want that hat sitting on top of the head so the bottom is going to be lower than the top or longer angle Does that makes sense I want the uh, I want this part inside the hat okay. so we do come back a little bit but not as drastic as in the bottom and the same thing we want to take off all those every everything needs a facet no 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 continuous edges let's just move my way around Give the whole head shape like I said a little bit longer angle on the bottom because that angle we want that going into the hat on the top rounding I should say we might as well clean up the uh, the neck nice and sharp we can go a little bit deeper let's really clean that nice clean edge all right so there you go I will work my way around and we'll come back and uh, while we're doing this on top here too let's let's uh let's make a nice sharp clean bottom of the hat even though we're gonna end up knocking most of it off but we want a nice clean clean cut in the bottom all right all right i'll finish up the head there is our shape now i want my two pet peeves are dressed is that the head goes inside of the hat so if you think about that ball like that's your that's your snowball all right so just make sure the hat doesn't sit too high on the head and the same with the the body this head is smushed down onto the body it's not it's not ball to ball it's it's placed it's stuck it's there it's not going anywhere so all right we've got our arms marked now something I thought of too would be a good time while we still have a little block head here put your center line on the hat and then uh, we can continue that down right through the body because we're gonna we're gonna put some some buttons and a nose and eyes and whatnot all right but there you go that's where we're at and uh, yeah so like I said before we uh, get too far the more facets the better and well depending on what you how you want to finish it i'm going to even add even more facets later but uh, if you're just going to use your knife then uh, that's where you're at so the, the more facets the better and also uh the hat now looking at this guy here something i don't like is the hat the hat's kind of boring it's just straight up and down it's long so you can think of start thinking about hats you can make any kind of hats i grabbed the old pumpkin head here i gave him a hat like that okay i'm probably going to go with a hat like that look at last last year's snowman see that last year's snowman has a little bit more character in his hat so i want to add a little bit of character probably by uh by tipping that back a little bit so on to the hat first thing i'm going to do well you pick your hat to start with you can put any kind of hat on here you know if we had thought about it too we could have made this into a uh, you know that could have been a toque or a beanie whatever you guys want to call it you know like a toque i like the top hat idea you can make a farmer hat straw hat like i said any kind of hillbilly hat but i'm gonna make this type of hat only uh Maybe just just kick back or sideways a little bit. But anyway, first things first is you can knock all these corners off of here. And all right. Now on the brim of the hat, I'm gonna be cautious and I'm gonna leave extra meat at first, okay? 
So I'm just going to go like this and down, all right? And obviously that is not going to be the thickness, but this is going to be become a very brittle area and it's very going to be very easy to break. So the rough work, we're going to leave extra extra meat and uh, try to avoid that. All right. I'm not going to give a really super big brim. But. For all those people who are going to ask me, where do you get your basswood? I'm going to tell you, uh, this basswood here came from more, in the States, it came from more rough outs and basswood. So if I find you asking me during, in the comments, then I know that you did not watch the video. So, all right. <laughs> as far as dropping my knife goes, I strop this knife nice and sharp just before I started. So I have not, if I strop my knife, I will tell you, but I have not touched it at this point. All right, so you can see I'm just working my way around Getting a little bit of depth in the brim. See that? And when I'm happy with the depth, and I think I'm almost there. I don't want it too too deep. That is oodles. Let's stop right there. Make sure we're somewhat the same all the way around. So I said I wanted the hat to kick back a bit. So let's see that. I'll look better in a minute. <laughs> right. So, again, if you only had a five inch piece of wood, not a six inch piece of wood, then uh, you have a shorter hat. You don't have to have a hat that long. Right. I'm going to take this over here. The hat, if a hat sits on an angle like that, surely the top should be somewhat back here. So we want to take that off the top. So when you're cutting end grain like that, that's a, that's a tough cut. But you'll know that you want to sharpen your knife when you start seeing little white lines. But I don't really have any yet. So we're still good. We're still good. A little bit of a hollow in the, the top of the hat, but continue to bring it back. Now I want to come right from that bottom corner. Start bringing it back. But I made a mistake in the fact that I'm finishing down to that edge, but I want to uh, I want to get that thickness so. I'm just going to split the difference here. I'm going to run that. Run that down. Right. See that? So we had, a, we had a thick edge. And then we just split it in half. 
I do not recommend ever coming down to a wire edge because that's just so brittle and it's a, such an easy place to break. All right. That's what we want on that side. So same thing. It's going to split the difference. Now it's a little bit droopier. All right. side or other. Kind of got a little... Now let's stick with that. Let's just give it lots of character. See that? We don't want any of these flat spots. Get the corners off. Take that saw mark off. Alright, that's a funny looking hat. So how are we going to fix that? Thin it. Thin her down a bit on the side. little folds here and there. And just one on this side. Alright. Make your hat your own. Do whatever the same hill you want. Right? There's no rhyme or reason to this one, that's for sure. Put a little buckle and belt idea on there. Um, I want some character here. Nice big wrinkles and folds. And If I change it, I'll change it off camera. <laughs> I'm not doing any thinking. I'm trying to trying to film and think and same time. It's not easy for a man like me. <laughs> Alright, let's leave it. Let's leave it alone. Call her a hat for now. Um one thing it could do, give a little bit of a A little bit of an upturn. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Give it a little bit of a. A little bit of a up. We 
call that? What would I call that? What was it? What's my word? Just a little. <laughs> I can't even think. What's my word? Curve. I want a little curve. A little bit of a curve of the hat. So now, just by uh, going underneath there, here and there, I'm taking away that sharp edge that I said I wasn't going to leave, and I did leave a little bit, but we're just, we're just kind of beating up this hat a little bit. Right. i got to leave this hat alone. Move on, Doug. Leave the hat alone. All right. There is our body and our hat. So I talked about uh, options and how you can change it up to really make it your own. And for now, this is where we're at. And we've got lots of good, good facets on this one. I'm not, uh, <laughs> it's actually too good to do what I'm, I want to do with it. But uh, lots of facets that are going to catch the paint. So I'm not going to show the painting of this because you can paint it any way you want. And you can go back and look at even dry brushing, and I think I will probably end up dry brushing the white. I won't have such a dark color behind, but I'm going to dry brush the white on. And I have videos on all that stuff. In fact, I just did a video on painting Groot, where I kind of show some other techniques. But what I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to take a, a, a gouge. And don't get caught up with the numbers or whatever or the sizes. You don't want a medium-sized tool. You probably want a palm tool. If you have a palm tool, just a, a this is a number seven. Is number seven, yeah. This is a number seven gouge. And uh, but like I said, any flatter gouge, you don't want to go too deep. But I'm going to take that gouge and I'm just going to go. And I'm just going to pop extra facets on the whole thing that I just carved. And I'll bring you down just to show you what I'm doing here. But of course, I'm not going to uh, go too crazy with the. Uh, you can go rough. You can go rough. You can go lines. You can do anything. You can go the other way and just make it like really rough. But uh, I'm going to get you down to my level here and I'll show you what I'm doing. And then I will just go on and continue to do it because I'm making this one for me. So I want one that's different. And uh, like I said, you know, you see pictures all the time and uh, a lot of my tutorials, everything looks exactly the same. And I want everybody to start to, uh, well, my goal this year is to teach people to, uh, not to be rude, not to, like I say, to think for themselves, but to change things and to make them yourself. And uh, make them your own, and then uh, you can be you can be proud to call them your own. But that's the texture that I'm I'm going to. So I'm going to bring you down for one minute. So I'm just staggering these little gouge marks, and they're going to really be picked up with the uh, since I'm going to dry brush them. The dry brushing is going to catch all these little little high spots. All right. So, does it make a big difference? Nope. But just one extra little step that you can do to maybe maybe it gives it a little bit more traditional look. There's a bad spot there. Get out of there. Or what is traditional, right? But see that how that's accentuated, and then facets, right? So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do the whole body like this, and then uh, I'll come back and uh, we'll pick up from here. But before we do that, let's do exactly what we did for our arms with our buttons and our nose. So no brainer, I'm going to put the nose. If these are my eyes, let's put the nose like so, and then how you can put a, however many buttons you want, but since I'm going to have a scarf here, I think three buttons is going to be good enough. All right. So I'm going to take a uh, smaller drill bit again. 
I'm just gonna mark. All I'm doing is marking where these things are gonna be. And then when I gouge them off, it don't matter. It don't matter. All right, I'll be back. All right. I think we just about got it. It's funny, even with a gouge, you can start to make patterns. So, let's look at this fella. I like it. I really like that. I'm gonna clean some edges here. Hope some little snots have crept in. I did take a minute and I kind of played with the hat a little bit more. I couldn't, uh, I didn't like it the way it was. Still don't love it totally, but we gave it some direction anyway. It's kind of flopped off to the back side, right? So. There we go. So there's our, our texture. Like I said, don't have to do it, but this one's mine and uh, I wanted to do it. I really want to see the dry brushing, how the dry brushing is going to pop on there. One thing that says that you're a super beginner, like I used to always do, I would caution you to, or ask you to go watch some of my painting videos. I probably got two or three of them now. And I do do things different all the time, but earlier uh, snowman videos or, or earlier carving videos, I tended to always paint solid. I don't paint solid at all anymore. I just use the craft store paints, but I like to to water them down now. I don't like to uh, to paint solid. I think it just gives you that just a richer a richer look, more uh, folk arty than uh, than public school. All right. Well, there is our textured up fella. Okay, now, you have seen, like last year's snowman, we did our eyes, cartoon eyes, and we carved the nose in. Today, we're going to, uh, I'm going to use just a, a dowel, and uh, this is my little board, my dowel and my corresponding drill bit, all right? So, from that, I'm going to uh, pop the nose in, but before we do that, like I said, I'm not going to do cartoon eyes. I'm going to do very, very simple eyes. And let's say those eyes are here. I'm just going to take what, a little bit of a deeper, a deeper gouge, maybe a number, number eight, number nine. Let's go with number eight. I'm just going to put a little, little thing like that. See that? And that's it. And I'm just going to paint those on there. A little black dot and a little white, a little black and white dots. And that's it. All right. So, and the mouth, the mouth, I'm going to uh, just carve in a big happy smile. You know, another idea for the mouth would be uh, buttons. You can do like five, five buttons, which I'll show you in a minute. But for that, for now, why did, I, why did I make that off center? Anyway, I'm just going to stick my knife in there, like so. Go the other way. I don't want it to be too open. I'm just putting a mouth in for most sake. See that? And on the end, I'm going to put one little cut down. And take just a teeny tiny little chip out of there. See that? On this side, same thing. Just gonna stick it in, and I want to take just a teeny tiny little chip. That's it. That's my mouth. Take off my pencil marks if I can. But very very simple. <laughs> but it's a mouth. All right. Okay. Let's punch in the nose. All right, we got our hole mark, so there we go. 
Now, before I do that, I'm going to just kind of take that little fuzzy off of there from the, from the drill. Now, I don't, uh, this is my, my dowel. I don't try to put glue on here because it seems to, uh, seems to uh, affect the paint after. So if I just put a little bit on there, it doesn't take much. Probably if you got your drill bit right, a friction fit is, uh, yeah, you hardly even have to glue it. So there, there's the nose. Pinocchio snowman. All right. But anyway, I'm just going to cut that like so. Once it's, and now we'll just shape it. Again, you don't want a super sharp point, but I mean, we just want it to look like a carrot. So nice. You know, those, the dollar store is amazing. Like I buy all these little dowels. The other day I had showed moss, you glue and paints and whatever you want. So if you have a dollar store nearby, well, I know the American ones are even better than the, the Canadian ones, but basically that's our nose and it's, uh, it's going to be highlighted because I'm going to paint it like a carrot. So it's going to be orange. All right. So now moving on to the, uh, the buttons. If we change our, change the drill bit. See, I went a little bit, uh, again, don't have to. This guy has the same size dowel for the nose as the buttons, but I thought his uh, nose was a little bit, a little bit skinny. So practice is how we change things. All right. Now we got a little bit of fuzzies, but I'm not going to worry about them at all. Okay, so take our glue again. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to push them in. Just a little bit of glue, mainly on the bottom. I'm going to stick it in. I'm going to cut it off. it in and cut it off all right we got her okay so we talked about uh, ways that we can make this our own now one way is the arms now remember our old pumpkin man with the wire arms well that's what I ended up doing last night and you'll remember how I took the three wires and I twisted them in the drill. And uh, the broom. I've added a broom on this guy and uh, that's just a dowel with some, uh, some uh, jute twine stuck on it. And I made another one with a stick earlier this morning just to... Uh, show you how I do that and basically just cut the cut the string and uh, wrap it and lots of glue and fuzz it up and you've got a little makeshift broom something else I thought of too was uh, someone asked me if I was gonna do anything special for Valentine's Day other than what I've already done and uh, I do have videos on Valentine's carvings but let's take these wire arms again and I thought what if we uh, whittle up a little heart? And then by taking that little heart, we can make our, our snowman bend those arms around and he can hold that little uh, whittled heart. That'd be kind of fun, right? So there's another option for you. So anyway, like I said, uh, many options. You can make a hockey stick and give him a hockey helmet for a hat. There's so many options you can do, but what I did this morning was I went out in the yard and uh, went looking for some sticks. So, 
So for my project, I'm going to give him traditional branch arms. So let's uh, let's work on these uh, these sticks instead of the wires this time. So on my stick hunt, what I'm looking for is I want a stick that's going to give me some fingers. Look at that. Those are claws on that fella. So if I cut, there's a, I like that. I like that. What else we got here? What do we got here? Let's go with the, uh, right here. These are, these are brittle, super brittle. Okay, well, let's go with this one. I just want some semblance of a, a fingers. All right, so there we go again. Let's try and find something that uh, that has a hand shape. And now, like I said before too, is I put those holes as a marker to fit whatever you use, whether that be wire or sticks or whatever, but on the same hand too, they don't have to be drilled straight through. The wire is nice to pull right through the body and then you can bend it around the body. But for these, like I may put one hand down, you know, so I might angle that hole up or I might make it straight, straight out. Okay. So it's up to you how you want to do your, uh, thing if you found a perfect stick that had a little curl in it you know put it in, just you know make it uh, get it out in front and then the uh like i said i'm going to do the same idea with the scarf so we're going to have the uh scarf tailing down each side and then the sticks are going to be either just a little bit out or down or however you want to do it so there we are at this point i'm not going to put the sticks in until i have him painted and I'm not going to bring you along for the painting, but I will bring you back for the finished product to show you how I did the uh, arms. And uh, yeah, so like I said, you can do wire, add a broom, add a heart, add a hockey stick, add whatever you want. But I'm going to go and paint him right now, and I'll show you the eyes and the... the I'll bring him back finished as well, do, And uh, that'll be it. So... All okay, right, like time that. for the big reveal. Here is our our snowman. I wish I had something to uh, let's do this. Let me do this. Here is our snowman. All right. <laughs> I like him. I like him a lot. I like the texture. What I did was I took a a piece of uh, felt and just cut a piece of felt. For the scarf and uh, I use the twigs obviously for the handles and uh, yeah just dry brush that uh, the texture dry brush the hat well I painted it a very light brown then I use some dark brown highlight it with darker brown and then use some white on there but uh, yeah I think he turned out all right and like I said this is a beginner project I'm sure that uh, anyone can do it but again make it your own Use the wire, use the broom, use the heart for Valentine's, do whatever you like. Hockey stick, helmet, you know, just your imagination is the limit. And uh, yeah, have fun with it and uh, make it your own. So hope you like this tutorial. I was uh, I've been a little bit shy on the tutorials lately, so I thought I'd give you another one just to uh, to see if you guys are still interested. So uh, we'll see. But anyway, again, thanks for anyone who bought me a coffee this week. I always appreciate it, never expect it. And until the next video, whatever that may be, I will see you then. Later, guys.